Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to discuss a very interesting topic, which is nowadays quite a popular topic among uh, the dermatologists and pharmaceutical industry. And this is the antifungal drug resistance in dermatology, the causes, diagnosis, and management strategies. Introduction. Fungi have been present for around 1,500 million years, with more than 1.5 million species, out of which only about 300 species are known to cause human infections. From the mid-20th century, the incidence of severe systemic fungal infections increased significantly, due mainly to increase in number of patients with compromised immune systems, such as acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. The indiscriminate use of antifungal drugs for wrong diagnosis and in improper dosage led to worsening of this picture, leading to installation of fungal resistance among uh, fungal resistance to common antifungal drugs in common indications. Among all the fungal infections, the superficial mycosis are the most frequent form of human infection that affect more than 20 to 25 percent of the world population. The dermatophytes are divided to zoophilic, geophilic, and anthropophilic, depending upon their primary habitat, that is, animal, soil, or humans, respectively. The zoophilic species are responsible for 30 percent of human dermatophytosis and usually cause acute inflammatory flare. The anthropophilic, anthropophilic species represent 70% of the infections and causing chronic infections of slow progression, suggesting that fungus has adapted to the human host. Pathogenesis of the fungal infections. The successful initiation of infection is a process closely related to the capabilities of infecting dermatophytes to overcome the host resistance mechanisms. So it is basically a dermatophyte versus host. When the dermatophyte is successful, it enters into the skin and causes the infection. Factors affecting the fungal virulence are defect in the normal physiological barriers, such as physical and chemical structure of the skin, the normal microflora, exposure to ultraviolet light, temperature, and humidity. So we commonly tell to our patients that don't wear shoes if the feet are wet and avoid sweating. So sweating is also one of the, um, one of the factors that, bar that damages the normal physiological barriers. So all the factors that damage the normal physiological barriers potentially, um, potentially make the person more susceptible to fungal infection. Then adherence of dermatophytes and hyphae penetration. Hyphae penetrate into the stratum corneum as a result of breakage of disulfide bridges at the stratum corneum followed by Secretion of variety of enzymes such as metalloendoproteases, which are also known as the as uh, fungal lysins, formerly called as keratinases, proteases, lipases, elastases, collagenases, phosphatases, and esterases. So, uh, the second point means that uh, the fungi have a capability of uh, not only causing a breakage in the disulfide bonds of stratum corneum, which results in its adherence and penetration of hyphae, along with secretion of certain enzymes, which causes lysis and again breakage of stratum corneum. Post response. Both non-immunological and immunological factors play part in the host resistance to fungal infections. The non-immunological factors include the sebum, unsaturated transferrin, 
alpha 2 macroglobulin keratin inhibitors, long chain saturated fatty acids, serum inhibitory factors like beta globulins, ferritin, and other metal chelators. And the immunological mechanism is the cell mediated immunity and is mainly mediated by macrophages and cytokine secretions from T helper cells. When this host response is defective, then fungal infections or fungi become successful in invading the uh, body. Then the fungal response, dermatophytes, have developed mechanisms that allow them to avoid the host response, such as inflammation and phagocytosis. How is it possible the fungal manans also inhibit the proliferation of keratinocytes, allowing the establishment of persistent chronic infection? So if the fungi are strong, stronger than the host response, then they will be able to sustain and penetrate the skin. Antifungal resistance. Fungal resistance is not at par with bacterial resistance. And the economic facets associated remains unacceptably high, considering the limited number of antifungal drugs available one of the main strategies of improving therapy is to overcome antifungal resistance. The antifungal resistance to azole was first reported in 1980. That was to ketoconazole used in patients of chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis. Mukherjee et al. in 2003 reported primary resistance of trichophyton rubrum to tabenafi in patients with onychomycosis. Azole resistance in dermatophytes is reported to be as high as 19% in certain region of the world. Fungal resistance can be a micro microbiological resistance in vitro or in vitro resistance and clinical resistance or in vivo resistance. In general, the clinical resistance is considered to be the persistent or progression of infection despite appropriate antimicrobial therapy. Microbiological resistance. Microbiological resistance can be primary or intrinsic, where the fungi are resistant to a drug before exposure. And secondary or acquired resistance is the one that develops after the exposure to antifungal drugs. Certain fungi are intrinsically resistant to certain antifungal drugs like Candida crucii to fluconazole, Cryptococcus neoformans to echinocardins, and non-albican Candida to 5 cytosine. The secondary resistance is dependent on the altered gene expression. For example, terbinafine resistance in trichophyton rubrum and fluconazole resistance among Candida albicans. Now the clinical resistance. The clinical resistance is defined as the failure to eradicate a fungal infection despite the administration of an antifungal agent with an intact in vitro activity against that organism. Although the activity is present in vitro, but it is not effective in vivo. Although the clinical resistance cannot always be predicted, it highlights the importance of individualizing treatment strategies on the basis of clinical situation. The fungal factors, host factors, and drug pharmacology play a role in fungal resistance in isolation or in association with others. So there are different microbiological factors which uh, or the fungal factors that result in resistance to antifungal drugs. The first is the gene effect. The effect of antifungal medicines on the fungal genes that result in gene amplification, gene transfer, gene deletion, point mutations, loss of cis and transacting regulatory elements and transcriptional activation. All these effects on the genes directly affect the influence of the cytotoxic compounds on the fungal cell. So if gene is altered by the 
antifungal drug, then those antifungal drug will stop working on that particular species. Decrease accumulation of drug within the fungi. Reducing the accumulation of drug within the fungal cell is done by increasing the drug efflux mechanisms. That is, drug is extruded out. The multi-drug efflux transporters are membrane proteins found in all the living organisms. These proteins bind to a variety of structurally and clinically dissimilar compounds and actively extrude them from the cells. Overexpression of true MDR1 and true MDR2 genes in trichophyton rubrum, which encodes an ABC transporter, was seen following azoles and terbinafine therapy. So this is the second mechanism by which the fungi don't let the drugs accumulate in the body, in their cell wall, cell under, uh, in their cell. And as a result of overactivation of uh, these efflux, uh, dr drug efflux proteins, and the drug is extruded out of the fungal cell. Then decrease affinity of the drugs to its target. A mutation or overexpression of gene coding for target enzyme is another mechanism developed by fungi. A point mutation in urge 11 gene leads to complete inhibition of binding capacity of azole drugs to its targets. Mutations in sculene epoxide gene ERG1, making the fungi about 1,000 fold less susceptible to terbenafine. Then changes in, in metabolism to counterbalance the drug effects, the de novo synthesis of pyrimidines. Antifungal drug like 5 through cytosine compete with regular pyrimidine intermediate metabolites for incorporation into the nucleic acids. A de novo increase in pyrimidine synthesis lead to 5 through cytosine resistance as seen in Canada glabrata. Then paradoxical effect. Few yeasts and filamentous, filamentous fungi are able to grow in elevated echinocardin concentration at much higher minimum inhibitory concentrations. This phenomena is called as the paradoxical effect or the eagle effect is strain dependent and is due to upregulation of the chitin synthesis in fungal cell wall after the drug administration. As a result of which the drugs become less effective. Biofilms are sessile, microbiological communities that are surrounded by extracellular polymeric substance which increases the resistance of antimicrobial agents and host defenses. Both trichophyton, rubrum, and mentagrophytes are capable of producing biofilms. Biofilms by yeast in certain molds are frequently polymicrobial and are resistant to almost all currently used antifungals with exceptions of echinocardins and lipid formulation of amphotericin B. Then cellular response to stress or stress adaptation. Fungi are remarkably adaptive to environmental stress following exposure to an antifungal agent. HSP90, HSP104, ubiquitin, calcineurin, esterase, and glutathione synthetase are key cellular regulators critical for orchestrating cellular responses to drug induced stresses. For example, Trigophytum rubrum following exposure to azole and grisofulvin to amphotericin B. This stress adaptation stabilizes the cell in presence of drug and allow it to develop more profound resistance mechanisms over the time that manifest as clinical resistance. Modification of ergosterol biosynthetic pathway. The antifungal activity of azole drugs depend on depletion of ergosterol from fungal cell membrane 
एंड एक्यूमुलेशन ऑफ टॉक्सिक प्रोडक्ट वन फोर्टीन एल्फा मिथाइल थ्री सिक्स डायोड लीडिंग टू ग्रोथ अरेस्ट alteration in the late step of ergosterol biosynthetic pathway can give rise to cross resistance to all the azole drugs the clinical resistance depends on multiple host and drug related factors which are as follows patient with severe degree of immunosuppression and with invasive fungal infection may not respond to antifungals delay in initiation of adequate dose of antifungal result in increased chances of treatment failure so delay will also be a factor when lesion is thickened crusted or necrotic with poor blood supply a debulking surgery is essential to overcome antifungal treatment resistance that's why we promote a debulking surgery before starting antifungals in u mycetoma cases compliance in patients is must and most require long term therapy so this should be told to the patient the drug related factors which are important in causing fungal resistance are the fungi static nature of most drugs inappropriate antifungal usage that is wrong diagnosis treatment with lower than therapeutic antifungal dosage prescribing topical therapy when requirement is of systemic therapy the long duration of treatment various drug interactions high cost of therapy and combination of polyenes and azoles with other nephrotoxic drug result in treatment failures once you suspect the antifungal drug resistance then it is prudent to Uh, confirm it by antifungal susceptibility testing unfortunately this kind of testing is available in only specialized laboratories and standardized micro dilution based tests are universally acceptable and there are four standard methods of antifungal susceptibility testing m27 a3 for macro broth and micro teeter yeast testing m38 a2 for micro teeter mold testing m44 a for yeast disc diffusion testing and m51 p for mold disc diffusion testing so all of them are of are seen in or done in specialized laboratories now the treatment or management strategies this is the most important part of this talk clinically and i would say that uh, each and every word should be listened very carefully clinically the antifungal resistance may be suspected in patients with recurrent episodes of infection unresponsive to the first line of therapy with generalized involvement or atypical form of presentation with usual history of similar lesions in the family so the diagnosis is done on the basis of typical clinical features and family spread but the typical cases of resistance are those in which there is atypical or generalized involvement and prolonged uh, and no response to prolonged therapy one of the important treatment measure is prevention of disease among the family members therefore non pharmacological measures like good hygiene play an important adjuvant along with the medications so the good hygiene include hand washing clipping of the nails regular bathing and complete drying of the skin use of non occlusive shoes absorbent socks and powder avoidance of sharing the combs towels brushes beddings hats and avoidance of walking barefoot in the bathrooms and using the other family members shoes or slippers the pharmacological measures like topical agent should be applied once or twice a day over the lesion and up to 2 cm beyond the uh, the annular margin of the lesion for 2 to 4 weeks and continued for 1 week after the clinical cure and the rash resolves the topical allylamines 
maintain the mycological cure for longer period as compared to azole drugs. So if we compare the topical alanamines like topical lemicel cream with topical azoles, then the topical alanamines are better. With respect to systemic antifungals, in addition to the proper dose duration and knowledge of pharmacokinetics, dose, dosage of dosing, pulse or booster oral antifungals and combination antifungals can all be tried. So pulse antifungal we uh, use commonly in onychomycosis when rather than giving 100 milligram daily for three months, we prefer giving 400 milligram of itraconazole for one week every week, every month. This is important that one should know about when to start the systemic antifungals in superficial dermatophytosis. It is general observation of dermatologists that topical antifungal therapy alone is not effective in all but in a very limited number of disease patients. So indication of systemic therapy are failure of the topical agents, extensive lesions, in involvement of multiple anatomical sites. I would say that if more than one site is involved, then you must go for a systemic antifungal. Then chronic recurrent or recalcitrant dermatophytosis, involvement of vellus hairs and nail. This is must for systemic therapy. Then steroid modified cases or tinea incognito and majoki granuloma. That is nodular lesions in the middle of cutaneous fungal infections. Terbenafine. According to some clinicians, terbenafine at a dose of 250 milligram, we are talking about adult dose, once daily for four to six weeks provides a good clinical cure. In a study of effectiveness of terbenafine in treatment of tinea corporis, tinea cruris, and tinea fasciae is 2% at two weeks. This is very important. Only 2% at two weeks and 30.6% at four weeks, which recreates the effect that terbenafine has a very limited use in the current epidemic-like scenario of superficial dermatophytosis. However, these patients tend to respond to 250 milligram twice a day, which are which is continued till a complete cure. So rather than prescribing 250 milligram once a day, it is advisable to prescribe 250 milligram twice a day to all patients uh, in whom we intend to treat them with oral terbenafine. And it is also found that the divided dose of 250 milligram twice a day is preferred over 500 milligram as a single dose. Itraconosol. The, the usual dose of itraconosol is 100 milligram twice a day for two to four weeks in naive or a new case and four weeks in recalcitrant case, according to the consensus statement. It is probably better to err on the four-week treatment rather than two-week treatment for any dermatophyte infection. So the preferable treatment will be 100 milligram twice a day for four weeks. The efficacy of capsule of 200 milligram and 400 milligram strength is not studied and hence unproven. Itraconazole has a non-linear pharmacokinetics and hence increasing the dose would result in disproportionately increase in serum levels and potentiate liver damage. So such high doses of drugs are not only unnecessary but are potentially hazardous. Optimum duration of treatment with itraconazole may be best individualized based on the clinical response. It is prudent to carry out investigations like liver function test and ECG before prescribing itraconazole, especially in elderly patients and those with history of hepatic 
और कार्डियोवेस्कुलर मॉर्बिडिटी लाइक सीसीएम आइट्राकोनोजोल इज आयनाइज एट लो पी एच दस आइट्राकोनोजोल शुड बी टेकन इमीजिएटली आफ्टर अ फुल मील यूज ऑफ अदर एजोल लाइक वॉरिकोनाजोल एंड पॉसाकोनाजोल इज डिस्करेज इन इन सुपरफिशियल डर्मेटोफाइटोसिस कंसिडरिंग देर यूटिलिटी इन इनवेजिव माइकोसिस एंड डी फंगल इन्फेक्शन एंड इफ इट देयर यूज इज मेड common then at the time will come when these agents will not be effective in invasive and deep fungal infections fluconazole though not a preferred antifungal in current scenario according to recent evidence fluconazole has certain advantages like a good oral absorption and a lower cost The recommended dosage of fluconazole of 50 to 100 mg per day for a period of 2 to 4 weeks. The weekly regimens are strongly discouraged and use of fluconazole 100 mg daily for 2 to 4 weeks beyond clinical clearance is recommended. So now there is another new thing for you all that is that for the established dermatophytes infection you are not going to prescribe 150 mg fluconazole on weekly basis so you are either going to prescribe terbenafine or itraconazole and if fluconazole is to be prescribed then this it should be prescribed as 50 to 100 mg capsule daily for 4 weeks 2 to 4 weeks by the way 100 mg um, capsule is not available only 50 and 150 mg capsules are available in pakistan however even daily dose does not give satisfactory result in many patients therefore fluconazole is recommended to be used only in cases where other molecules cannot be prescribed due to underlying comorbidities obvious contraindications and lactating mothers in lactating mothers fluconazole is a correct option adjunct adjunctive systemic or interventional therapeutic modalities in treatment of superficial dermatophytosis so in case of resistant and difficult to treat dermatophytosis it is important to add the salicylic acid or other keratolytics in addition to antifungals the anti inflammatory and itching effect is subsided by addition of oral antihistamines There have been isolated reports of use of isotretinoin in recalcitrant dermatophytosis. However, since terbenafine and itraconazole are primarily lipophilic, and isotretinoin reduces the sebum production, the concomitant therapy appears to be antagonistic. So the potential for cumulative liver toxicity also increases. Hence, this combination of isotretinoin. with terbenafine and itraconazole is discouraged combination therapy of systemic antifungals there has been increasing trend of combining oral antifungals with an expectation of achieving better treatment outcome and the recommended use of combinations like fluconazole or itraconazole with terbenafine or grisofulvin or grisofulvin with terbenafine or grisofulvin with fluconazole or itraconazole in patients with chronic or recalcitrant dermatophytosis when there is unsatisfactory response at the end of 3 weeks of any of the above monotherapy it is advised to perform baseline complete hemogram that is blood cp and liver and rfts whenever up dosing or combination therapy is contemplated to issue the cumulative toxicity in recently published article author found that combination of systemic antifungal uh, terbenafine 250 mg per day and itraconazole 200 mg per day is an effective and safe therapeutic strategy in management of resistant dermatophyte infections the disadvantage is the increased toxicity increased drug interactions and increased cost 
there is currently no large scale trial reports demonstrating safety or efficacy of combination oral antifungals in dermatophytes but still this is the current strategy use of topical and systemic antifungals in children and elderly topical antifungals are preferred in elderly patients due to liver and uh, cardiac toxicity and if uh, the oral treatment is to be given then terbinafine is safer option than azoles in pediatric age group topical antifungals are preferred because of the thinner skin and better permeability in cases when lesions are large and non responsive to topical antifungal or extensive lesions or in case of steroid abuse then use of systemic antifungals becomes imperative and considering the increased drug resistance to terbinafine itraconazole is now considered as the second line systemic agents in infants even 1 month and above of age the dose of itraconazole is 5 mg per kg per day for 1 week in tinea corporis and tinea cruris and 2 weeks for tinea pedis and manum in children it is interesting to note that bioavailability of itraconazole oral solution is 30% greater than itraconazole capsule and maximized absorption is achieved mt stuff this formulation has been used to overcome the problem of treating children who have reduced absorption of itraconazole capsule primarily because of nausea and vomiting and reduced or reduced stomach acidity in pregnancy it is prudent to treat with topical antifungals however recent studies um, conclude that terbinafine is safe oral drug in pregnancy however the level of evidence is poor and further research on this subject is necessary to to recommend the use of terbinafine as a safe option in preg- in dermatophytes in pregnant women antifungal drugs plus non antifungal drugs combination of antifungal drugs with non antimicrobial agents such as calcineurin inhibitor that is cyclosporin a and tacrolimus proton pump inhibitors like uh, rhizic anti erythematic drugs cholesterol lowering drug like statins and immunomodulators and anti neoplastic drugs anti parasitic agents microbial metabolites and human recombinant antibodies are all shown to be effective cyclosporin singularly is not able to inhibit fungal growth but increases the susceptibility to fluconazole due to efflux pump deletion or alteration of stress response that is caused by calcineurin during azole therapy so the studies show that statins are active against mycosporum canis and trichophyton mentagrophyte synergistic interactions were noticed when simvastatin is combined with terbinafine in and given in dermatophytosis hemopoietic growth factors like granulocyte colony stimulating factor or granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor anti h1 cytokines have activity on antifungal functions of phagocytosis and increases the efficacy of antifungal agents then fractional carbon dioxide laser combined with topical antifungals such as terbinafine amaralfine and lulis luliconazole was effective in treatment of onychomycosis newer antifungal drugs drugs having pharmacological similarities with older drugs with lower minimum inhibitory concentration levels and specific indications like isovuconazole micafugin and lulisconazole repurposing of established medications where an old compound with a known pharmacology is used alone or in combination with another drug for a newer indication for example calcineurin inhibitors target of 
rapamycin inhibitors and HSP90 inhibitors in synergy with azoles. The way forward. Recent advances in fungal genomic and, prote and proteomic proteomics have revealed that genes, protein, or virulence factors required during infection of host tissue by dermatophytes, for example, the efflux pump inhibitor, the transcription factor PACC, wide domain regulatory proteins involved in pathogenicity events, and sulfide transporters are important. There are, these are proposed as interesting targets for antifungal drugs in future. And the newer targets decrease the drug interactions at affordable price, which at this stage appear distant. However, newer insights on drug resistant mechanisms could lead to advanced treatment strategies in managing the fungal infections in future. So I would conclude by saying that deeper, while deeper fungal mycosis, deeper mycosis are still difficult to treat. The common cutaneous fungal infections in dermatology, which are considered easily treatable, but lately the, uh, the antifungal resistance has developed and which led to failure of the commonly used drugs. So the current solutions to this could be good skin hygiene measures, the prudent use of antifungals in proper dosing and duration, appropriate use of susceptibility testing, usage of older molecules such as grisofilvin or topical keratolytics in combination with newer drugs, and in appropriate dosage and combination therapy with two antifungals or systemic antifungals with topical antifungals and topical keratolytics. So these are all discussed previously in the lecture. And this leads to the conclusion of this lecture. And I thank you all for a very patient listening.